March the 31st is the 36th day of Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine. In the Donbas region bordering Russia, the occupiers used prohibited weapons, phosphorus shells, once again. They can cause severe injuries or provoke a slow and painful death. It is known that 11 people were injured as a result of the attack, including four children. Russian troops also continue to attack the Zhitomyr region bordering Belarus. Four settlements near the Chernobyl zone have been occupied by the enemy. In many villages, explosions and shelling are heard every day. As in Kharkiv region, which is in the east of the country, the Russians again bombed the center of Kharkiv. During the last week, at least 399 buildings have been destroyed there. And since the start of the war, that number has already exceeded one and a half thousand. It also became known that an entire column of vehicles with people were shot by the occupiers near Kharkiv. More than 20 wrecked cars were found on the road. It was also hot near Kyiv. As a result of the airstrike, several residential buildings and infrastructure facilities in the Kyiv region were destroyed. At least two columns of volunteers were destroyed by the Russian military near Chernihiv. The vehicles, which were carrying humanitarian aid to the occupied city and tried to evacuate people, came under the target fire. This was reported by the volunteer Anton Senenko. Some volunteers were killed. Some of them were injured. Cars were burned to the ground. Among the dead is a second-year student, Anastasia Tagirova. There were five minibuses with civilians in one of the shot convoys. Ukrainian ombudsman Lyudmila Denisova called these actions of the occupiers crimes against humanity. The Russians do not give the slightest opportunity to take the civilian population out of the blockaded Chernihiv, in fact holding tens of thousands of people hostage without food, water or heat. At the same time, daily heavy artillery is shelling residential neighborhoods. Chernihiv, a regional center in the north of the country and one of the cities most affected by the Russian aggression. The city is almost completely surrounded, without food, electricity or water. And shelling continues despite Moscow's promises to reduce combat activity in Chernihiv. The 10-year-old son of a marathon runner with a disability, Maxim Us, was killed with a Russian shell. And his wife, who was wounded, faces the threat of having her leg amputated if she hadn't been evacuated immediately. The occupiers are harassing and raping Ukrainian women. Cases of brutal crimes by the Russian military have become systematic, according to the Human Rights Commissioner Lyudmila Denisova. The occupiers are harassing and raping Ukrainian women. Cases of brutal crimes by the Russian military have become systematic, according to the Human Rights Commissioner Lyudmila Denisova. In Mariupol, the Russian occupiers took turns raping a woman in front of her six-year-old son for several days. The woman died of her wounds. Her little son turned grey. During the occupation of one of the villages in Brovary district, a Russian officer shot the owner of the house after which he repeatedly raped the victim's wife. In a state of alcohol intoxication together with another Russian soldier, threatening the woman and her child with violence. The woman's husband, who asked not to publish her face and name, was killed by the occupiers for wearing a camouflage jacket. And she was raped for several hours while her four-year-old son was hiding in the boiler room. Since 208, rape has been considered as a war crime. And for all such cases, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitro Kuleba, promised to seek justice in the International Criminal Court making Ukrainians starve to death. The Russian occupiers are destroying the country's food infrastructure. One of the farms in Kharkiv region came under enemy fire. Kaushats, administrative buildings and machinery were destroyed. Most of the cattle on the farm were killed. In order to create a food crisis not only in Ukraine but also in other countries that buy Ukrainian crops, the occupiers are trying in every way to disrupt the planting campaign. In the town of Gulaipola, the Russian military destroyed the agricultural equipment of one of the enterprises that was to begin the spring field work. 
the Zaporizhia military administration reported. In eastern Ukraine, the enemy is shooting at granaries. Also, to leave farmers without fuel, the Russian military is shelling oil depots. At least five facilities have been already destroyed by missile strikes. On March the 31st, the occupiers seized 14 tons of humanitarian aid. These are 12 buses loaded with food and medicine, which arrived in the city of Melitopol, Zaporizhia region, temporarily occupied by the Russian troops. There is no chance to return what was stolen. Thus, Ukrainian authorities demand to return the buses and use them for evacuation of the population from Melitopol. Ukrainian Mariupol is the black spot on the map of Eastern Europe, the city that the occupiers destroyed during the so-called liberation, destroying not only buildings but human destinies. Fifteen-year-old Olena Zagreba kept a video diary where she told and showed her life in the blockaded Mariupol. Together with her parents, the girl lived in a shelled, cold apartment without water or gas while Russian troops bombed the city from planes and artillery. The girl was collecting snow to have water for survival. Along with her neighbors, her family cooked food in the open air. From the girl's video, you can hear that the strikes on Mariupol almost did not stop. Finally, Olena's apartment was also heavily hit. Luckily, the girl and her family managed to escape and break through the controlled territory of Ukraine. She is abroad now. For more than a month, the invaders have not stopped shelling Mariupol and even filmed their crimes on their phones. More than 100,000 Mariupol residents remain hostages in the city, where the Russians do not allow to deliver water, medicine and food. To prevent the humanitarian disaster in Mariupol becoming a tragedy for all of the Europe, the city must be urgently unblocked, urges Svetoslav Palamar, deputy commander of the Azov battalion. If the war aviation has hit on some place, then you can multiply it by 100. The number of released ballistic rockets you can multiply it by 10. Додайте сюди сухопутну та корабельну артилерію, і ви отримаєте звичайний день оборонця Маріуполя. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an usual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? Це больниця Маріуполь. Роддом. No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal.